All right, so I recently stumbled upon a blog post from boot.dev written by the wonderful Lane. Make sure you go check out boot.dev. Link is in the description below. Great source if you're interested in learning how to program. Uh, but this article is titled, Put That Framework Down Before Someone Gets Hurt. And the reason this tickled me fancy was because about four months earlier, I made a video called The Truth about Golang backend frameworks, where it basically described the fact that you don't really need a Golang backend framework because so many of them are so similar. The ones that go into this video describe that. And I basically said, if you're starting out, maybe explore using the standard library first before just jumping in head first into a framework to solve cases and solve problems for you. I have not read this article, but let's go into this. There's only one question that ignites my inner rage more than how do I get a developer job in three months. That question is, what framework should I use? It's not that I think frameworks are evil, scary, or even bad. I'm just bothered by the assumption that to build an online thing, you must start with a framework, which is exactly what I alluded to earlier, that a lot of people, a lot of engineers, maybe beginners, or even people who are seasoned, just rely on a framework to do everything for you. And I'm not saying frameworks are bad, and I don't think Lane is saying they're bad either, but there is a world that you can probably achieve what you want to build without having to rely on a framework. Uh, what do I mean by framework? The JavaScript ecosystem has had its way with the definition of the term web framework. The JS community seems to excel at keeping us from having nice things. Whew, shots fired, Lane. I like to define the terms library and framework as follows. Library, code that you import into your project. Framework, a structure that you import your code into. A framework provides nearly as much project locking as programming language. If I choose to build my application in Next.js, it's impossible to move to Svelte without a rewrite. 100% agreed. I think that's key differentiation here between a library and a framework. Hey, Next.js devs, React is a framework. Neither Dan Abramov nor God himself can convince me that React is just a library. I understand that it can be kind of used as one, but no one does that. Put that hammer down. You want me to put the hammer down? Story time. I was working at a company about five years ago where we were maintaining an ETL pipeline that processed anywhere from 100 to 1,000 messages per second. There were some microservers involved that did a bunch of different things. For example, translating a message from one language to another, sorting the message into categories based on keywords in the content, sending alerts based on aforementioned categories. One day I was tasked with figuring out why one of our services was choking at a mere 30 messages per second. Oh no. This service was responsible for taking messages from a queue and placing them into different Postgres databases depending on which customer cared about the message. In theory, it was literally this simple. Message comes in. If customer ID on the message is in the map of customer ID, database URL, then insert the message into the database. I hopped into the project and was immediately dismayed to learn it was Ruby project, but not just a Ruby project. It was a Ruby on Rails project. <gasps> no, no. Dan Abramov has even caught some bullets here. Look, I have no problem with Ruby on Rails. Really? There are plenty of examples of companies that have made millions or even billions of dollars on the back of Rails projects. Why do I need an HTTP router? Why do I need an auth library? Why do I need all the other junk? I need two things. A way to concurrently pull messages from a rabbit queue. A way to insert messages into a database asynchronously. Go and JavaScript both have super easy and light ways to accomplish this. I've seen a few lines of code and not much by web dependencies. But could it have worked in Rails? Yes. I think I don't even need to read the rest because yes. The way I like to think of a question like this, but could it have worked with X or NY or whatever? It's always yes. You can always make a shape fit through something that's not supposed to do. It just depends on how much you really force it in there. The point is that it wasn't the right tool for the job. And I think the whole debate of frameworks is that is the framework being used for the right purpose for what you're building? If you're just using a framework because that's your default, well, then maybe you should take a step back and reevaluate your design approach or your architecture. Maybe you just need JavaScript, but you're so heavily involved with React that you actually don't know JavaScript as well as you think you do. It's a question of default. At boot.dev, we use Nuxjs for our front end UI. It's a great framework. But when I write a Discord bar, you won't catch me running Nux in it. I'm not just saying use the right tool for the job. Instead, I'm saying use the simplest tool for the job. It's easy to add complexity as you need to accomplish your goals. It's much harder to remove them. So that's a great article. And I holistically agree with Lane there almost at a 95%. The one thing I do say is sometimes the simple tool may not be the best tool because the way someone defines simple may not be, you know, what you define simple. Someone who's used Redux for for hundreds of years, this hermit uh, could think Redux is the easiest tool to implement. But 
the way I want to look at this and take a step back and focus more on the framework approach is that frameworks don't necessarily spell out the right result. If you want to excel, if you want to build a depth of knowledge, then kind of putting the framework aside and trying to achieve what you want to work in the most minimal amount of lines of code in the most efficient way, try doing something without depending on a framework. And a good example is Golang. I've made tons and tons and tons of videos about Golang. And the ones that I always like to talk about the most is how easy Golang is to use because there is no JavaScript framework problem in the Go ecosystem. Some people are just Angular devs, but they're not React devs and vice versa. But at the end of the day, they should just be JavaScript developers using a tool for the right job. In Golang, yes, I think great Golang frameworks exist. However, the standard library is so powerful. The standard library that Go comes out of the box for you to use right away without even going into the internet to pull anything else is incredible. And I highly recommend people to try this out. And I agree with Lane that, you know, sometimes frameworks, they're too complex and you may not need everything to come with it. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe for more of this content. But as always, you got to power it.